This might seem like an odd time of year to talk about irrigation. But if you are thinking of adding a watering system to your polytunnel or greenhouse then now is the time to get it done. Irrigation plays a crucial role in the polytunnel, as your indoor crops won't be benefiting from natural rainfall and are more reliant on you. A number of options are available when it comes to polytunnel irrigation, but in our view the best solution is either a soaker hose or a dripper system which runs at soil level. With these methods there will be less water wasted through evaporation, a potential pitfall that can be magnified in the warmth of a polytunnel. You will also reduce fungal problems on wet leaves. Obviously soil level irrigation is much easier to install before the plants go in. Both systems are easily attached to a garden tap or hose, and are simple to join together and achieve whatever configuration you may need. Key Benefits of a Polytunnel Drip Irrigation System It will save you time. A drip system can deliver water more effectively, directly to your plant's root zone. Set the timer to come on early in the morning when it is cool so water soaks into the soil rather than evaporating. A drip system can deliver a more precise amount of water, and it will be more consistent than hand watering. You can go on holidays. Less risk of fungal disease from wet foliage. The localized delivery of water means that you won't be wetting the surrounding soil unnecessarily. In turn this will give weeds less of a chance to get a foothold. What about sprinklers? A sprinkler system is often used for polytunnel irrigation, particularly in commercial settings where crops are grown at scale, but it can have a number of downsides. For one, the enclosed polytunnel structure is more prone to high humidity levels than outdoor growing conditions. Combine this with a watering system that wets the foliage from above and you can see the potential issues. Warm and damp conditions can create favorable conditions for mold or fungal disease. Aside from that, sprinklers are not the best system if you're looking to conserve water. It can depend on the temperature, but some water will evaporate before it can be taken up by roots, while water is often being spread over bare patches of soil as well as plants. Even and measured watering. Uneven watering puts plants under stress and leads to bolting, running to seed, woody roots, beetroot, or splitting, carrots and tomatoes. If you are anything like me then watering can be patchy at the best of times, especially when things get busy and you don't have the time to do it properly. Water evaporates quickly from the soil surface, especially in hot weather, so there may be less than you think getting to you plant roots. If I was to give you one tip on polytunnel growing it is even watering. It really is the key to producing the best crops. How to set up a drip irrigation system for your polytunnel. Setting up a drip irrigation system can seem complicated, but it is actually very simple and easy to do once you understand it. It is really plumbing for kids. All you will need is a Stanley knife to cut the pipe. Everything else just slots together and is tightened by hand. I quite enjoy working out the systems to be honest, so if you need a hand let me know or use the contact form on our site. I can draw you up a plan and give you a parts list for everything you need. Basically you start from your water supply, tap or hose, end where you can add an optional timer or filter if you need one. The water is then carried to the area you want watered using a supply pipe, black, no drippers, where it connects into your irrigation pipe, brown, with drippers. You can have as many dripper lines as you wish and can send them any direction you like using the range of T-pieces, connectors and elbows. The dripper pipe comes with tiny valves embedded in the tube every 30 centimeters which irrigate at a rate of 2.3 liters an hour. If you are running the pipe up and down beds, it is best to place your lines 30 centimeters apart. If you have large, and thirsty, plants like tomatoes or cucumbers, you can run a separate ring around the root area of each plant by taking a T off the supply line and using another T to loop around the plant as shown. You can further control your network by adding in line valves at each subsection. This allows you to turn off areas that don't need watering as much as the more demanding plants. They are easily added by loosening the ring clamp, cutting your irrigation or supply pipe and pushing each cut end into either side of the valve. You can also place valves within individual beds for an even more targeted delivery.
Pegs can be used to secure the dripper pipe and stop it from moving. The system is reusable, ultra adaptable and can be extended where necessary. If you would like to order irrigation parts one have arranged them on a single page on our website to make it easy to build a system and check the total as you go. The image above is for illustrative purposes but on the live site you can click on the blue I buttons for any more information on any of the fittings. Using drip irrigation with raised beds. If you are growing in raised beds in your polytunnel, we have now added some drip irrigation kits and plans for the most common raised bed sizes. These kits are quick and easy to install, with push fit connectors and an uncomplicated layout. The dripper lines are spaced 30 cm apart and 15 cm from the edge of the bed. Dripper and supply pipes are both 16 mm. A valve is included with every raised bed plan, allowing you to restrict the water supply to individual beds, or temporarily close a bed off from the overall system, depending on plant needs.